Uh, this is a giant battery for a giant twist lithium ion battery pack. I'm gonna show you the original. Here we have the original giant pack. It's sun new cells. You can see that they're red. Not much more. I opened one of these before. And it's a 7S4P. It's made in Taiwan, not in China. That's why it looks like this. It has this plastic bag, like you get wine bottles or flowers in or something. That they twisted and taped up. They have a very, actually very good water resistance. It's like a little plastic bag for your battery. I've never seen anything like this. It's not heat shrink plastic, it's just a plastic bag folded very neatly. Like something you <laughs> put wine in Japan or something. But this is the way they do it in uh, Taiwan. They use Sanyo cells. And the configuration is really strange because uh, here you have the uh, negative one, five cells in a row. Then they use each one is positive and each one is negative to have this spiral con thing. And it's really hard to take apart. And there are 35 Sanyo cells. So, so for me, it's not worth the trouble. And there are lots of glues and screws. Uh, here you can see the BMS. It's very different from the standard BMS that you get to see in all kind of BM batteries from China. One of the reasons are these thin, ultra thin uh, fuse like connection to the cells. And you can find many do it yourself videos on how to use Tesla style fuses, as they were called. And this is the only e bike battery I've seen this in. Very thin, maybe one millimeter or so. Probably made to handle about two or three amps, maybe four. But it also has one and two temp probes. And uh, we actually like working with this battery because it only has one simple discharge port, the positive and negative. So it doesn't matter what kind of BMS you use or how you build the battery. You can build it any way you like as long as it's a 7S lithium battery. Bit. You can even change it to to light for four cells if you like that. There is however a four pin connector to the charging port. It uses a four pin XLR port. Uh, it looks like the white is dormant and the blue is the same as the positive. And these are most likely the temp probes. So you can probably use the same charger. What we prefer to upgrade our customers with our own chargers. So they get a brand new charger with the pack. Uh, the interesting thing with this battery is not just that it's very complex and that we can upgrade it to more than twice, almost three times the capacity. This is a 26 volt 9A amp hour battery. And 9A was probably kind of much when this came out uh, March 2011. And there you can see the cells maybe 2010, 2011. The interesting thing is that we're gonna use these brand new high capacity cells from Samsung. They're very expensive, so we're getting this guy a great deal because we wanna try and build a battery with this Tesla size 21700 cells. They have an amazing 4.800 milliamps. That's just, we can upgrade this to a 24 amp hour battery with just these 35 cells. And we still have pretty, pretty much space left for a BMS and for all the wires. So this is probably a very good battery if you want to try out this um, new cell format. Also the height is perfect, there's larger light than the 18650s. But there's still a margin of about half, half a centimeter or something. So this is gonna be perfect and also the weight. So this customer is really getting a good deal with brand new cells and technology. Uh, we're gonna have to glue them together. Uh, I asked my supplier of uh, 8650 holders and they can make uh, this size. Uh, they can make this size older but they don't do it yet because of low demand. But you can probably order them pretty soon. I'm gonna use hot glue and of course use spacer between the cells. I'm done hot glue in this Samsung cell. I don't like hot gluing but when I do I always use isolator or some kind of holders. And these, I must say, fit perfectly. They fit like a glove. You can't even move them upwards or downwards. 
Uh, they can wiggle a little up and down, but in the other direction, they're just perfect to the millimeter. I think I can add one layer of heat shrink tubing or something, but other than that, it's pretty perfect. Let's see what they weigh. 2.4, and this is 1.9. So that it's not the same weight but slightly higher but no one will probably feel the difference when holding a battery. It was a little bit different working with these ones they want 700 cells. They're a little bit taller so I had to adjust the spot welder and also these uh, pre-made nickel strips. They're not made for this exact size but it doesn't really matter because this connection doesn't be over the cells. They can be anywhere along this line. Some places there were five and some places there were four. It doesn't really matter because it's uh, 0.15 thick. And this is for a 250 watt batteries. So this, will, this is three or four times as many as I really need. I also really like that they are wider. So it's just a lot easier to spot well. Especially the tops that are smaller than the bottles and the bottles are just huge. I would like to use even wider nickel. Uh, these are probably 7 millimeters in width. I would like to use like 10 millimeters in width to really make sure you have the best possible connection for every cell. And here you have it, the Samsung cells. I actually charged it up to uh, uh, about 5 amp hours at first and I had to abort. But now it's been charging overnight so you can see it's 5 amp hours. Uh, plus 19.3 so it's like 24.5 and that that's pretty decent it's actually <laughs> it's over 24 so I'm happy with the Samsung cells and this is at 2 amps 